don't you say a word cause I've heard it all You were just pain when you felt it all oh. Something tells me that I won't miss it It's the first time that we can't fix it It's irreversible damage done The thrill is gone Ooh, baby, I know why about you You chose to keep the truth inside Ooh, baby, gave my heart to you All you did was tell me Now you may be wondering where I was just launching my trebuchet and a quick shout out to Inside FPV for letting me bring my trebuchet along to their drone racing event. It was in fact a charity run drone race, uh, however I decided to turn up with a medieval weapon. Now before I start with this video I just want to make something clear, uh, I've made a few mistakes in my last few videos with the calculations of this, quite a few of you have commented uh, about it. Uh, the actual calculations for the efficiency of this trebuchet were off because instead of calculating the energy transfer, uh, so the energy of the tennis ball at release over the uh, predicted energy of the tennis ball uh, as a percentage, I actually worked out the predicted, sorry, the actual velocity of the tennis ball over the predicted velocity. And what this did was mess with the way that you square root the velocity in the kinetic energy equation. Uh, so thank you to you guys for pointing it out. I can't change it in my previous videos, but I have mentioned or I've put the actual values of the kinetic energy efficiency uh, in the descriptions of my previous videos. Uh, and I will also list them just here. But nevertheless, of those efficiencies, I still managed to improve them from the initial efficiency to the end efficiency. Uh, and the actual plan for this week's video, the original plan was to try and launch these tennis balls as far as possible and try and hit a target out in the field uh, a few well not quite 100 meters but uh, you know quite a distance into the field now at the end of last week's video i put a little note at the bottom of the video saying how far these tennis balls actually go uh, i think i put about 78 76 meters uh, but it's very difficult to show this on camera because they disappear out of sight so quickly or at least the camera's sight with the naked eye you can see the tennis ball uh, but on the camera without having to zoom in or filming in really high, you know, like 4K, uh, it's quite difficult to see the tennis ball. So I've been trying to work out how I can film this properly. And through trying to work this out, I've found out a few different things which make this whole video a lot more complicated, just like my previous videos. Where do I even start? So early this week, I invited my friend Brett round to film some cool shots of the trebuchet with his Galaxy S9 phone which is capable of filming at 960 frames per second, which make for some awesome slow motion shots. The next plan was to have Brett stand out in the field and I would try to hit him with the tennis balls. Well, it was more that he had to see where they consistently landed so that we could place a target and try to hit it, but they didn't consistently land anywhere. Just watch this shot. At the end of my previous video, I wrote a small note saying that all the balls landed within 4 meter radius of each other. Well, they don't seem to be anywhere close now. So to achieve that amount of curve, the ball must either be spinning at a fair rate, or there is a crosswind at the altitude that they reach. So I decided to spray one half of the tennis ball red to see if it was really spinning. And yep, that's definitely spinning. Looking back at the slow motion footage taken with the phone, it is clear that the sling release is causing the spin. One side of the sling releases and the other is fixed, therefore causing a downwards force on one side of the ball. I couldn't see how I would prevent this, so why not try and harness it? This is how I've been mounting the tennis ball in the trebuchet. Each string attached to the sling are mounted side by side in the lateral axis, and the fixed string is on the left hand side, which might be why it spins to the left. So how about placing it with the fixed string at the bottom, 
and the release string at the top. Maybe this could put some backspin on the ball. Look at that, dead straight. To confirm this quick test wasn't a fluke and that the crosswind hadn't just stopped, I decided to launch a few more and use this drone shot to show how much the balls were veering off course. I aimed the trebuchet directly towards the power line pole with no intention of hitting it of course and I fired two balls with the sling strings in the lateral position therefore inducing a left hand spin and two balls with the sling strings in the vertical position and it was pretty evident that the mounting of the tennis balls in the sling did cause a significant difference. Here I've marked the landing spots on a single image with the white dotted line being the direction that the trebuchet was aimed. The red crosses mark the balls with the induced left hand spin and the green mark the tennis balls with the backspin. As you can see the backspin balls are almost exactly dead centre with where I aim the trebuchet. However the left spin balls are off target by roughly 6 to 7 degrees. Interestingly enough the backspin didn't seem to increase the range by much. I thought it might add a small amount of lift to the ball and carry it a bit further, but I suppose being consistently on target is good enough for now. Also with these aerial shots, I had the shutter speed of the drone quite low so that I could actually see the velocity of the tennis ball depending on the motion blur. This made it clear that the tennis balls are falling almost vertically before landing because there is minimal motion blur just before they land. This means they have depleted almost all of their horizontal velocity, which I assume is due to air resistance or drag. So I decided to order a cricket ball to test. A cricket ball weighs 156 grams, which in comparison to a 56 gram tennis ball is quite a bit more. The idea was that the heavier cricket ball would be affected less by the air resistance because it would have more momentum to keep its horizontal velocity high. But when I launched the cricket ball using the same length of sling and the same angle release pin, it went sky high. So I adjusted the sling release pin and this happened. Did you miss it? Yep. That arm went backwards just before release. It seems that the outward centripetal force of the cricket ball was too high and actually created a greater torque in the opposite direction to the counterweight. Now I'm not sure whether a heavier counterweight will fix this as I don't have any more weights. So maybe I need to do some projectile weight testing. I went back to using the tennis ball as a control. Control test with a 56 gram tennis ball. Then cut a hole in it and incrementally added 10 gram weight to the tennis ball and logged the release angle, the release velocity and the range travelled. The sling length and the sling release pin were kept constant as I had no easy way of adjusting these out in the field for a constant release angle without reviewing the slow motion footage. Straight away I can see the difference between the first and last shot. With the lighter tennis ball the trebuchet arm can be seen wobbling quite a bit after release as it still has quite a bit of kinetic energy. However with the heavier tennis balls the arm is moving far less. So before I show you the data, let's make an assumption. If the trebuchet transfers the same amount of kinetic energy to the tennis ball, regardless of its weight, we can assume that the velocity of the tennis ball will decrease in an exponential fashion due to the kinetic energy equation. As the mass, shown as m, increases in a linear fashion, the velocity squared, shown as v squared, must decrease in a linear fashion. But because the velocity is squared, v must be the square root of the linear values, therefore producing a weight versus velocity graph like this. However, the actual weight versus velocity graph looks like this, with a straight line, not an exponential line. So this suggests that the kinetic energy is changing. Here is the weight versus kinetic energy graph. As the weight increases, the kinetic energy also increases. However, it slowly plateaus as the weight of the tennis ball gets towards 130 grams. Now what's interesting about this is that as the weight of the projectile increases, the trebuchet technically becomes more efficient, but only to a certain point and this point is about the 130 gram projectile range for my trebuchet. So anything heavier than that will probably just cause more issues. Now going back to the cricket ball releasing at a super steep angle. As the tennis ball weight increased, the release angle also increased exponentially. However, the range of the balls traveled seemed to be very close to being linear. So even though the heavier balls were going really high, they were still traveling further than the lighter balls. So I have all this data and quite honestly, I'm not sure what to do with it. My gut feeling would be to use a tennis ball in the 120 to 130 gram range because these are very close to the plateau of the kinetic energy graph and don't release at a super sky high angle. I also think that anything heavier will just cause the same weird arm flick as the cricket ball as well as also having a slower release velocity. So let's give the 126 gram tennis ball another shot with a low release angle and some backspin. Yup, I don't see any arm flick. So what about the backspin?
That's some awesome backspin, landing 117 meters downrange. Not bad compared to the range of the 56 gram projectile being only 86 meters, increasing the overall range by 36%. So there we have it. My trebuchet continues to intrigue me. I have no idea what I'm going to discover next. Uh, every week I launch this thing, I seem to find something new about it, whether it's a, well, the trebuchet or the projectile. Uh, with the data that I gathered today, I'm not really sure exactly how to interpret it. Uh, I managed to increase the range from about the 70 to 80 meter range up to almost 120. Uh, that last shot was 117 meters, which is pretty impressive. I didn't expect the characteristics of the cricket ball uh, being too heavy to affect uh, the trebuchet the way that it did. Uh, the way it caused that arm to sort of stall and go backwards quite violently uh, was quite surprising. I had assumed that the weight of the projectile would cause it to release earlier uh, because the actual swinging acceleration as it comes around uh, should be greater. Uh, logically, that sort of makes sense. I'm not sure mathematically how that works. Uh, but I did kind of expect that. I suppose what I need to do next is just do lots of trial and error experiments, uh, different release angles uh, of the tennis ball uh, and different weights. Uh, the release angle is quite hard to experiment with out in the field uh, because I have to review the footage and see the trajectory that the ball goes at. So to be able to uh, you know, keep a constant 30 degree or 45 degree release angle, it's quite difficult without you know, spending lots of time reviewing all the footage and coming back out here adjusting the pin. So I think that's something that I need to calculate over time. The whole backspin thing and the left spin of the tennis ball, uh, I thought was pretty interesting. I didn't expect that to be the case. At first, I actually thought it was just a crosswind. Uh, so I'm glad to know that it was a spin and that I can prevent it happening in the future. I suppose once I've got all the data from all of this uh, projectile testing, I will either make a projectile or modify a projectile like this. Uh, you know, it would be good to have a projectile, tennis ball sized, but have dimples like a golf ball. Um, and then obviously have it the right weight. So I don't know, 120, 130 grams. Uh, that would be pretty cool. I think American baseballs are 140 so grams. So maybe that might work. I believe this is, this is 156 grams. So I think a baseball is slightly smaller and slightly lighter. So that might be a good option. Maybe I'll need to order one of those to experiment with. That's it for this week's video. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please click subscribe. A huge, huge thanks to all of my patrons for supporting me. You guys make these weekly videos possible and I couldn't do it without you. So huge, huge thanks and I'll see you next week. Goodbye. I think that went further than the trebuchet.